Hello and welcome to episode one of a brand new series. Now this audio was already completed once and my computer scrambled it, so I apologize for the delay. But the episode is up and running. Now the first task here is going to be claim all the treasure from Gudrick. This relates to the Shadow Over Ashdale quest. One of the interesting things for me on the series is that I actually haven't done a lot of these quests. We'll see the, the next task that we show at the end here. I haven't even done the quest for as well. I really like the task format. OSRS has some really cool series, and we're not really able to do region locked in the same way with cool tiles and borders and no tile man, although tile man would be super cool. Um, don't worry, there's going to be a little more zoom on this video here. I'm going to adjust that right now. But all that said, I, I saw this website for task command for RS3, and I think it's awesome. I'm not sure that all of the tasks are just going to be RS3. That's one piece I haven't totally figured out, so if that's not the case, then we'll have a few that are a little bit goofy. Um, besides that though, assuming that I can just skip those and move on, we're going to be rocking. Let's start the quest. I'm pretty sure Gudrick gives you some free gear too at the beginning, I think I saw him at the beginning of the account. One of the cool things with this series is going to be exposing me to more quests, even some stuff that maybe I haven't done or weird tasks I haven't even done on the other RS3 accounts that I've played on. So I'm excited about that. Um, Shadow Over Astil is definitely a beginner quest, but it has some really cool effects that we'll see as we go on. Uh, basically, Gudrick tells you, like, hey, there's a problem on this island. Go check it out. And you show up in what is basically the prototype of the city of Um, I think with the fog, the rain, the general jeeriness, and you find somebody hiding in a house. Now, the door's open. One of the cool things with the quest is that the camera pans are frequent, and I actually like that as a, as a quest feature. I think that that's cool. I think it kind of pulls you in, uh, and I wish more quests did that, frankly. The other cool thing that happens here is that any of the items that you need have the quest icon with them. It seems like there's been some flux on that happening. Uh, some of the quests have it, which is awesome, and some of them still don't. It makes it pretty annoying when you require, what I'm gonna say are mundane items, and you don't realize you need to be picking them up out of a room unless you're following a guide. Of course, realistically, probably all of us follow guides, um, but it'd be kind of nice, kind of nice if the quests did not require them. So, my, my two cents, not worth a lot. I'm checking out the carpet here, or what I thought was carpet, um, but it's actually uh, great. Uh, it's, it's a cool look. I, I don't mind. I also like that you're going underground. You're kind of like trying to explore. Uh, this is a little confusing. It's sort of a trope, I think, right, where something falls. and But they don't like ooze green goo or anything. Actually, they look cleaner than the hero as a necromancer. Um, these guys uh, actually look pretty, pretty dang fresh. If you've done whatever the elite dungeon is for these, the, the underwater one with the ambassador, then you you know about, all about the Crassians. It's minnow time, and one of the interesting things about doing the task is that uh, I just read the title here. Um, Gujar can be found, blah, 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 and then claim all the stuff. So uh, it's, it's kind of a fun way to go in a little bit blind because I know that this is going to be simple. This is not going to require any, any giga brain action. Or at least, that's what I'm thinking so far. But we might need a little bit of food. Uh, I am familiar with people killing the big bad at the end. I'm not sure, or Agaroth, I think is the name, uh, for Jeep uh, XP, I guess. I say I'm familiar, but you can say, like, not that familiar. Um, but I'm aware of the boss fight. So I'm thinking, eh, maybe actually I should have brought, like, a tiny itty bit of food. And I'm going to look pretty dumb if I die here. Uh, definitely tabbing to the wiki to try to understand what I need to be doing next there. Uh, one weird thing is that the, the city is like, totally empty. But you have to go underground anyway. And actually it's going underground that you actually spot the Crassian Leviathan. Or not not Leviathan, excuse me, it's the, the Crassian Scout. So it's a little bit of RuneScape quest logic. Actually above ground looks pretty safe. Let's go underground. That doesn't make any sense at all when we know that they are coming from the beach and from the below ground. But sometimes you just go with RS logic and RS logic says, hey, you get to go to this underground sequence that ultimately doesn't really matter. 
because we're just going to go underground again in <laughs> kind of a goofy, cutesy way. Uh, this is pretty fun, though. I, I'm giving it an hard time because the quest is a little bit derpy in some ways. But I like that you're going around the island. You're doing little questy things. You're pulling on a mantle to go downstairs, you know? I don't know where these quest rules get written, but it does seem like uh, an innate rule to quest everywhere that you have to do some cool stairwell descent. And uh, frankly, I mean, if I could pull off a stairwell descent in real life, that would be uh, pretty awesome. <laughs> so anyway, we're downstairs. We're, uh, I guess we're at the beach beach now. And here's where the, the quest actually kind of showcases some of the stuff that they tried to do with this. And it's not a new quest. I don't feel like they maintained these, but maybe there's something that I, I missed in future quests. I've done almost all the quests in the game across a variety of accounts, but not actually all of them. So if somebody in the comments has a perspective on this, I'd absolutely chime in. Yeah. The puzzle room here, which is not a puzzle room, sort of hilariously threw me off because I was expecting like a Dungeoneering style puzzle or something that required a little more wherewithal to complete it. But actually it, it doesn't. And it takes a second for me to realize that you just need to combine the hoop and then, uh, you know, build, build the barrel. The fluid dynamics on this little bit awkward in that the water doesn't really flow how you would think it would actually flow, but Hey, it's a uh, Shadow of Ashdale quest that we're doing a task on. The one cool thing, though, is that it's pretty obvious which barrel that this goes on once I finally spot it. I like it when it's that straightforward. So we've repaired it. It's the middle one. Now, you would think, uh, based on how these barrels work, that, hey, let's just open them all and the order doesn't really matter and it's going to flow mm, unfortunately the the order does matter we've got to do a little one by one goofiness to actually make it through on the barrels and i i wish that that was not the case but there's no actual puzzle i know in the one of the more recent quests there was a, a quite a large picture slider puzzle i don't mind those myself i did pretty well on that one i think it took like seven minutes or so which is not speed demon territory but again i actually don't mind those myself uh, so that was pretty chill i know i got a, quite a bit of pushback though and maybe there's an in-between between the not actual puzzle here of ashdale on a beginner quest and what i don't even think was billed as like a serious hard quest with a puzzle that people kind of did hate actually but I'm not balancing the quests. I don't notice this at the time, but the pods are actually important. The people are in the pods. Somehow I missed this. Um, even though there's a cutscene and I saw that one, it didn't really register that they were all going to be inside the pods. So it was a little bit weird for me at the end when the folks pop out. Spoiler alert. Um, here, I accidentally start completing the, the quest, though. The, the task. Or I do here in a minute. Yep, bingo. So the chests are actually what you need to loot. Most of the post-quest work that you do requires it to be, well, post-quest. I don't realize that that's not the case here on these tasks. You can actually complete it as you do the quest. So that's what ends up happening <laughs> as we look to claim all the treasure. So many times I feel like these you have to go back afterwards, which is 100% what I'm expecting. A little bit weird this guy doesn't attack you and it takes me forever to find the lever this is one of those things <laughs> yeah, boom one shot one of those things about rs with the graphics where sometimes it's so easy to tell what needs to happen like the barrels for example and on this one i don't know why i would expect there to be a lever and i don't know why the lever would be so insanely tiny that's one of the goofy things is it doesn't have like the red knob on the end. There's nothing that tells me it should be there. It's actually by a torch, which makes it harder to see in my opinion, because you see the torch and you move on. But the animation is dope. I like that you're slicing through them. It takes the quest from just being like a spammable combat to in my opinion, something a little bit cooler. Well, I like that a lot. I wish that would happen more in the newer quests where it was this sort of like mm, skulking around not really about combat, but about doing it in a cool way. 
I just did this with, I think it's Death to the Dorgashen, one of the Xanic quests on this account. And it's the same kind of vibe where Xanic actually kills the evil, uh, I don't remember what the abbreviation is. I can only think of the dare, uh, dare to say no to drugs abbreviation, but where she kills all the anti-goblin people and she literally shoots them in the back with a crossbow, which for RuneScape standards is pretty gnarly, right? You know, you usually have like a good character uh, shooting them in the back, but I guess goblin justice is a little bit different. Anyway, I like that the quest wasn't just about combat. It's a little goofy with ticks on like not being spotted and running across openings. And that's really the limitation of all of these things for RuneScape. Like the follow parts of quests are terrible, like really annoying to not get found because you ran forward and then they paused for no reason. But here is you have to navigate around and I'm running around. I even um, in a little bit here will turn off my run because the timing gets so uncomfortable on actually hitting it successfully that well you don't want to screw up through another one there's a dead body here and the doors are sort of opening for mystical reasons i'm not sure why the crassians when they die are unlocking the goop uh you would think that it would unlock the bodies but it doesn't it it just doesn't Here's another chest. We're picking up sapphires for days. You're going to have to petition Jagex to remove this. It's too good for Iron Man. You know, wow. Too many free sapphires. And another little cutscene where we see the lever. Of course, now we're with it. We're woke to the lever situation. And we give it a little, little loop-de-loop here. Barely beat the guard. Running around the corner. Running around the corner. Being RuneScape timing, though, we're actually faster than... The the other guard so we do a really goofy turn off run uh try to turn run back on there i don't you see the click but it doesn't turn back on anyway they die the spikes shoot up the mystical goo green goop of doom goes away and we are approaching a ship uh the the squid thingy i'm not sure exactly what it is but agaroth is going to be our next target and here's two more scouts check out this death skulls easy money and here's our chest bingo and un uh, well surprising at the time now that i've seen this twice no but uh, the task is done we did it we actually we beat the task we beat the game uh what i thought would be like a cool finishing screen uh, isn't actually the it just goes you to the next task. I thought there's gonna be like a hey, complete congratulations, one of seventy, you know, or whatever the number is. So I kind of thought we'd get a cooler result, and that's why I clicked compete, complete during. But we don't. Uh, the tentacles are super weird here as well. You see, we can death mark them. They have 200 HP and they have a hard cap. I'm sure it's so you just don't, you know, fly through them. Uh, but really weird after like dealing with hurricane and that guy death marked we weren't even hitting him over there so it, the mechanics of that seem e extremely awkward but they also hit extremely hard in 900 and we can only hit them for 40 and it doesn't seem very balanced if you ask me cool cutscene the floor is shaking pointy head squid thing uh looks sick i guess it's the squid crab i'm not really sure what that is it it it's clearly uh, like a cuttlefish kind of thing, but yeah, besides that, I don't know. Easy skulls, and we get knocked back past range. Nice. Not really an elite PVM move uh, by me, but he's about to go down. 9,000 HP. We're getting ready to phase the boss, hit him on an easy bloat, and 1,000 HP. Time to dodge the mechanics, get ready for the phase. And jokes on me, there's actually no phase. The boss fight completes. <laughs> so the tentacles hit extremely hard compared to the boss. Bit goofy. Bit goofy. Not gonna lie. But we did it. And the people are excited. And it's cool for once to have a cutscene where the f people like your hero. It's so weird in RuneScape where you run around, you become a world guardian, you save people like constantly 
like you are always saving the world, the kingdom, even even just like Varrock, right? And it's a little goofy here too that there's no like post quest dialogue. That's what I was hoping for is that people were thanking you or you could talk about what just happened. Uh, there's none of that, actually. It's it's just hey, everyone's partying, but nobody wants to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, kind of goofy. Yeah, head back to the mainland though. I would love if they added more of that. So like post uh, quest cutscenes where people are thrilled with you, they're excited, and frankly that you could actually talk to them. But all that said, our first task is over. Thanks for watching, and task number two will be coming up live.